Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing M. Hamid in a 15 plus 2 game on leechess.org. Let's open with e4. Is my layout good? It looks alright. Excuse the slight mess with the webcam at the bottom. Okay, back in the saddle again, guys. It's been a while. I'm recording this on the last day before New Year's, so December 30th, 2019. I have not been playing much chess lately. I've been working on chess a lot but I've not been playing it myself. So for the past, oh, about two and a half, going on three months now, I've been working on the videos for 100 Endgames You Must Know, which is a book by Grandmaster Jesus de la Villa. It was published over a decade ago now. And we have it on Chessable. It's been out for a couple of years on Chessable, the company I co-founded. And I decided to do the videos for the course. And I've been diligently working on those for the past, yeah, two and a half, three months. A3, by the way, here is meant to discourage black from playing C5. I will show that in analysis. I've played A3 before, but I've never faced A5 in this position. Evidently, he thought I was trying to go B4. So I'm happy to see this, though, because now I can play Knight F3. This is the Austrian attack in the Pirtz. That's the opening black is playing, the Pirtz defense. So this is an Austrian-like attack just with the moves a3 and a5 thrown in. This should be good for white. Okay, so he castles. Now usually you want to play bishop d3 and then e5. Open up lines towards black's king. I'm just debating if I want to play e5 first here. Or if it matters. Let's play bishop d3 first. Hold off on e5 for the time being. Black can't play e5 safely because I have one, two, three attackers on that square. And black only has one defender, so they would lose a pawn if they did that. So these videos, it was over 200 videos in total, ranging from as short as one minute to as long as 25 minutes. In the cases of some rook endings in particular, and also rook and bishop versus rook, there were some videos that were pretty long. And I'm very proud of the material. I think it's good material. It's one of the bigger projects I've ever worked on in chess. But I wanted to give it my full attention, so that's why I haven't been recording, streaming, really haven't even been teaching that much. But now I'm all done with it, so going to get back to that stuff. And the course itself will probably be released in mid-January, so coming up very soon. Now, knight c6, all right, still thinking about playing e5 here, just asking that knight where it wants to go. If black captures, I plan to take with the f-pawn. And I know the F-pawn stands for forget about it, but given how much space I have and the fact that black is sitting back, not occupying the center, I think I have full license to play this move. So let's do it. D5 was an alternative as well. D5 made some sense because black didn't have knight B4, but I like how this may turn out. On knight d5, I was thinking of knight e4. I could also capture and play c4 and ask black where they want to put their queen, although knight e4 is a pretty thematic move here. Again, I like the fact that I have control over b4. Black's not going to land a knight there to bother my bishop. I could also try to launch some sort of h-pawn attack. That happens in this line as well. But if I play h4 here, black does have bishop g4 pinning. And I don't know that I want to go all in with h5 at that point. That may be unsound. So debating between knight takes d5 and knight e4 here. Leaning knight e4. But I'm looking again at the capture on d5 and then c4 if that leads to anything. If I could follow it up with d5 after that, I'd be a little bit more happy about it but I'm not quite ready for it. I could also play some restriction move like h3, although that doesn't really seem in the spirit of the position. Hmm. If I play knight e4, black might play bishop g4, which threatens bishop takes f3, followed by knight takes d4. I could play c3 at that point, but there may be some f6 business. Yeah, kind of a tough call. I 
Knight e2 is even interesting just to overprotect the d4 point. Looking for c4 again when the knights don't get traded. I feel like I played knight e4 in similar positions here and it hasn't worked out as well. Although it's the move I naturally want to play. Hmm. Given that bishop g4 is the next move, I'm just thinking how I best want to deal with that. Because knight e4, bishop g4, c3, and then say f6 doesn't look that great to me. I mean, maybe I can just trade on f6 and be somewhat better there. I do have the c5 square, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to go with knight e4. I know I talked in a roundabout manner about that move, but let's see how black reacts. So on bishop g4, I think I'll play this c3 move. Really solidify that pawn chain. Looks too risky to play c4 if my knight on f3 is pinned. I also have not been playing any tournament chess. Go figure. I hope to get back into that in 2020. No major plans to play any Grandmaster Norm tournaments or anything like that, but I would like to play some local stuff here in my state. We have our state championship. I'm in the state of Minnesota, and our state championship is in February every year, so I will try to play that. And I often get asked... So I might as well mention it, especially for the, the newcomers to this channel. I'm an international master in chess, which is the second highest title. Grandmaster is the highest. And to make Grandmaster, you need to fulfill a number of requirements. Most notably, you need three Grandmaster norms, which are performances in nine round tournaments or longer. And you also need 2,500 plus FIDE rating. So I currently have one Grandmaster norm. I made it in a tournament in St. Louis in 2014 or 2013. I always forget which year. He does play bishop g4, so let's go ahead and play c3. And my FIDE rating is a shade under 2450 right now. I think it's 2446. So I need two more norms and, you know, 55 FIDE points. So definitely some work to be done. I've been in IM since 2006. So... I spent quite a long time at this level. And I do feel like my chess has gradually gotten a bit better over the, the past decade, but I've also found that I'm probably not going to make the Grandmaster title just by playing tournaments every once in a while. I did make a, a push for the Grandmaster title in 2017 and early 2018. I was playing some tournaments, took about six months off from other obligations and was mostly trying to concentrate on playing tournaments and studying. Plays h6, a little unusual. Kind of looks like a5, where maybe he believes I'm trying to use the g5 square. But that move definitely looks suspicious. It presents a target right here. I'm thinking about just h3 or castles. Both moves look fine. Let's go ahead and castle first. Maybe h3 on deck. So I played some tournaments uh, in 2017 and 2018, a string of tournaments that were Grandmaster Norm eligible. Got close a couple times, but still sitting on that one norm. And I, I think in 2020, I probably won't do anything substantial in terms of trying to play more Norm tournaments and making a Norm. But I may play one or two events if the opportunities come up. I'll be pretty busy once again with chessable and other stuff. But overall, I feel just very lucky to be able to do chess for a living. So whether I play tournaments or not, it doesn't matter a whole lot to me. And I really enjoy teaching and making content. So to me, that's just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling, because I get to share it with you guys. 
So I like my position now. I think h6 really missed the boat. I think black probably had to try f6 there to get some counterplay. Otherwise, my center is quite strong and stable. So he could try f6 now, but that doesn't make a good impression with all three of those pawns having moved. g6 in particular will be weak if he plays f6. So for example, f6, e takes f6, e takes f6. Maybe I can just play knight c5, which threatens bishop takes g6. I'm also looking at the pawn on b7. Maybe he could play b6 there after knight c5, unclear. Another move that comes to mind in this line is just knight f2, retreating and attacking the bishop and threatening bishop takes g6. It's just very sketchy position for black, having those three pawns abreast there. Actually, speaking of backwards knight moves, I just watched the tiebreaker for the World Blitz Championship, and I will not give away the result in the off chance that you're watching this video and you have yet to watch the World Blitz Championship footage and don't want it spoiled who wins. But there is a game, Nakamura versus Carlson, Nakamura as white, where there was a backward knight move possibility. I'll link the position in the comments if you're curious. And it goes to show you how the knight moves, especially moving backwards, are some of the most difficult moves to find in chess. Just our brain doesn't visualize those well because Nakamura had a golden opportunity to play this knight c2 move in mutual time pressure, and uh, he missed it. So, If I were black in this position, I would probably play b6 here, just to rule out the knight c5 possibility in the future. Again, I think trying to stab at my center is probably not going to work out so well for black. I don't see anything active that they can do here. So a move like b6 seems in order just to make sure they take away this future knight c5 possibility. And while he's thinking, I'm planning what I'm going to do next. Queen e1 definitely catches my eye. That would be a nice way to look at queen h4, attacking the bishop, also threatening the pawn on h6 twice. So you often see that in these positions where the f file is open. The pawn on f2 is no longer there, so the queen has a convenient way to pop over to the king side. That happens a lot in the Grand Prix attack of the Sicilian, for instance. Okay, he's going into the tank here. I like to see this because I obviously went to the tank, went into the tank on move 10 when I played knight e4. Hmm. And he played the move I was mentioning. I should also look at c4, right? Because it just occurred to me that by playing b6, he's taken away the only safe square for that knight. I think that just wins a piece for me. He can take d4, he'll have a little bit of compensation, but that looks to win a piece. See, I'm recording this locally, but this is setting up like a stream snipe. <laughs> Be a great stream snipe. Okay, I mean, it may not be completely clear, right? Because he could play bishop takes f3. I could take with a pawn. I don't even have to take with a piece. I was thinking uh, if I had to take with the queen or the rook, knight takes d4 would hit those pieces. But c4, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes d4, take. Yeah, he's going to have a little bit of compensation, as I said. I'd like to keep that pawn on e5. So I also want to briefly look at c4, knight takes d4 directly. Take d5, queen takes. He can keep that pressure there. Mm. Although he may lose h6 if that happens. I'm going to play it. Let's see what he does. Knight takes d4 looks best, but... I mean, I could try to analyze this further, but just instinctively... Okay, he plays that move. That briefly crossed my mind, but I saw that at minimum I can take, and when he takes on e4, I can take with a bishop, and I'd be attacking the knight, which only has the b8 square to go to safely. I'd also be hitting g6. The pawn mass in the center looks awesome. The other thing is I could move this knight and just maintain the attack on the knight on d5, which is still trapped. So knight f2, for instance. It'd be nice to do this domino effect capture, but my knight on, on f3 and also my bishop on d3 are hanging. 
So I think it's between knight f2 and taking on d5 here. Hmm. So knight f2, he can still play knight takes d4, c takes d5, queen takes d5. I guess I could take g4 there. Maybe even some sort of bishop c4 move will work somewhere. But this is just a, or sorry, this is a pretty appetizing option as well. I think I'm going to go with this, just for simplicity's sake. Because I figure I'm up a point of material here, and he has to play a super passive move thereafter, knight b8. The other line was probably good, but he's going to get, I would say, two pawns, and it's messier, and he has more of an initiative compared to this. So this is a, just a pure practical decision. Always good to cut down on the opponent's counterplay if you have a choice between two options that one looks messy, one looks safer, and you think they're about equivalent in terms of an advantage, you should go for the one where your opponent has less counterplay. Yeah, just a really nice pawn mass here. So if he plays knight b8, what will I want to do? I don't think I'll take g6 because I do lose d5. And I'd rather keep that pawn. I could play d6. Just advance and hit his rook in the corner. Ah, forgot he has a7 to go to. Those backward knight moves again. I saw the one backward knight move, but not the other backward knight move. <laughs> All right, so I still have d6 as a possibility here. He could maybe sack the exchange. What else might be decent in this position? H3 certainly comes to mind. I'll probably play bishop f5 against that. Now, d6 definitely looks like kind of the critical move. but I, I really like my bishop. Hmm. Queen b3, maybe? Or just bishop e3. I'm just going to develop. Yeah, get the bishop in the game. Connect my rooks on the back rank when the queen inevitably moves. Somewhere here, here, most likely. I mean, this piece is a non-factor for the moment. Plays g5, okay. So this diagonal is now pretty weak. So queen d3, d6 again merits consideration. Let's just play queen d3. Continue building. It'd be nice if these two pieces were switched around, although then black would have bishop f5 ideas. I mean, I'm not so much looking to play bishop h7. I just want to coordinate, connect my pieces. Also takes away this square from black's knight, if ever black wants to go there. Stops bishop f5 too. I have that square double covered. Rook b8, okay. Let's just play rook c1. Some pressure against c7. Another move I can definitely consider is h4. Just trying to break this construction here. But let's just play some easy moves first. Okay, e6. I could get a pawn roller going. So if we trade here, I could play d5. Maybe followed by e6. Black's king is looking awfully suspect there. Especially if they go after a pawn on b2 later. Might be possible, but doesn't seem great. Yeah, let's capture. And push this central pawn. I 
I'm expecting bishop g4. And then if I play e6 at that point, and then bishop takes b2, let's just say for the sake of argument. I plays bishop f7. Okay, so now I can play e6 with tempo, even more compelling. Sometimes it's good to keep these pawns side by side if you're unsure whether to push one or not. But e6 looks so natural here. He'll probably play bishop h5. I'm also looking to see if my knight can hop somewhere. Knight d4, though, leaves these guys a little bit vulnerable. Yeah, let's go ahead and play e6. And on bishop h5, just debating between knight d4 and bishop d4. Okay, again, black doesn't play the move I was thinking of. Knight d4, bishop d4 still look good here. Kind of leaning towards bishop d4. Ah, black has an idea though, bishop b5. Have to be cautious about that. Sneaky. <laughs> Off the rail. Billiards shot. Okay, so maybe knight d4 instead, which will cover that square. d5 is secure. If bishop takes, I can trade f8 or just take with the queen. Same if black inserts the capture on f1. I like it. Let's do that. So up the pawn, nice central construction here. Black's king is looking very weak still. Knight f5 is on the horizon, maybe. I do have to watch that b5 square, as I said, but future idea to consider. There's likely going to be a rook trade as well. So this should be a pretty easily winning position, but again, got to keep my wits about me. If you're black, you really hate to give up your dark square bishop here. That's pretty much the only defender of your king, so I'd be shocked if he played bishop takes d4. Tough to find other moves here, though. Maybe he'll play something like rook c8, or perhaps knight c8 makes sense, just to try to blockade here or here. That's probably what I would do if I were black. Plays queen e7. Okay, this invites knight f5, though. And rook takes f5, I can take with my rook. So bishop b5 isn't going to hurt. Yeah. Almost an automatic decision here. He does take... Let's take with the rook. He can grab this pawn. But... I could double up with an eye towards rook f8. Although again, bishop b5, he has that idea. Plays knight b5. Okay, so maybe going for here. Kind of like knight c8. d6 hits the queen and the knight, but he can take with the knight, so that's nothing. Okay, still a little bit of work to be done here. Is that knight will blockade on that square. So maybe rook back and on knight d6, bishop g6 or bishop h7 check first. Yeah, I think I'll pull this back just because it helps support b2. And knight d6 doesn't come with a tempo on the rook at least. So I think I'm going to play my bishop into g6, just debating whether I should give a check first. I think he'll play bishop b5 no matter what I play. So it may not greatly matter. 
I could also play bishop d4 if I wanted to try to force a trade of the dark square bishops. Not a lot of time left here, though, so just got to be practical. Let's play bishop g6 directly. On bishop b5, I think I'll play queen c2 and attack c7. I would like to go bishop f7 check after that, though, assuming black plays something like rook c8 to defend c7. Black should probably try bishop b5 just to keep pieces on board. When you're lost like this, you want to keep as much tension as you can. Try to confuse the issue, but... Should be hopeless. Maybe on bishop b5, queen c2, black can play knight c4. I do have to keep that in mind. It allows a check on f7, but... King h8? Mm, it's not terrible for black yet. I'm also seeing if my queen can go elsewhere. I mean, maybe queen b3 is a good move here. Or I could play that bishop f7 move. Take. Take with the pawn. Maybe queen takes is possible there, although it looks bad. Kind of leaning towards the queen b3 move. Let's do that. And if a4, I'll play queen b4. Pin the knight. Not exactly what I had in mind. Again, queen c2 was the move I was considering, but just trying to stop this knight c4 idea. He goes back to e8. Hmm, that's surprising. Now, one interesting plan here is to play bishop b1 and try to get that battery I was talking about going. But I think given the time situation, I should just take and simplify. Now, black doesn't have the knight c4 idea, so let's go about attacking c7. Black has to play rook c8 here, I think. And then I have some fun ways to play. Queen g6, for instance. Looks very strong. Menacing bishop d4. I can try to double up on the f file. Maybe h4 somewhere. Yeah, I think shifting towards a kingside attack is wise. Plays this. So I can take on Passant. He takes e6. I could take c7. But I could also continue with my plan. Uh, queen g6. If I want. Now nah, let's go with the Ampassant capture. Just bank the material over here. Take. Got to move a little bit faster now. But I'm up in exchange plus two pawns. Mm -hmm. Rook b8, so he's eyeing up b2. Hmm. Think about rook e2 here, perhaps. Yeah, let's see where black's queen goes. I don't think the f file control is that valuable anymore, so. If black steps to, say, d5, I can play rook d1, attack the queen, and there's also the knight behind. So just trying to destabilize black's pieces.
Also discourages black from playing knight e4. I guess I would expect queen f6 here, perhaps. Although there I can chase as well, rook f1 if I want. I probably just don't want to allow black to play rook takes b2 after my bishop moves. Unless I can move the bishop somewhere pretty useful. So the queen goes back to c8. Okay. Kind of liking queen g6 here. Hits the knight. Let's do that. So attacking an undefended piece now that the queen has moved away. Also maybe a prelude to this. Looking for rook e8. Try to tie black down to the back rank. Rook e7 too. I would think knight f5 is almost forced here. Knight f7 instead. Okay, because now I have bishop here. Yeah, that's an easy move to play, especially in a time pressure situation. Bishop's pinned. Black has to play queen f8. And now black's completely tied down. Let's play c7. Force rook c8, and then I'm thinking rook e7 for the absolute tie down. <laughs> that looks just really unpleasant. Take, take. King h8 is almost the only move here. And then I can just take here, for instance. Yeah. There's a check here, but no problem, just king h1. All right. So it definitely seemed like one-way traffic after Black had those troubles with the knight. So b6, this move that I originally said I would think about playing as Black, did run into c4. Now I feel like Black should probably just play knight takes d4 right here. And c takes d5, queen takes d5. Try to grab three pawns for the piece. Because they will have two pawns at that point, and if they could win e5, it'll be messy. But they played f5 instead, and this was, as I said, a practical decision just to cut down on black's counterplay. But I will be curious if the computer thinks knight f2 is better here, or some other move I haven't considered. And I can take en passant, but he takes with the knight and escapes, so that's why I didn't play that. I don't think I mentioned that line, but... Also be curious about this knight e4 decision. I think I need to study these positions a little bit more because I may even have been in this position in the past without a3 and a5. So a standard Austrian attack. We'll look at that for comparison. As far as the conversion phase, I never felt like things were out of control. I did almost miss bishop b5 after black played bishop e8. So the billiards, billiards, shot, billiards shot off the rail, as I said. Um, but I think this was all pretty reasonable. Black was putting up some good resistance for a little while. Yeah, probably just could have done better on my time management as usual, guys. <laughs> I'll cut myself some slack because I haven't been playing and usually you're just not as sharp. You might take more time. Your calculation isn't going to be up to your normal standards when you've taken a break. But after this, I was well in control. Okay, let's click over to the analysis board. Just one thing here real quick. Uh, let's run the computer analysis. Let's see what it says. So this is the Peart's defense. Yes, that's the correct pronunciation of it, by the way, Peart's. For a very long time in my chess career, I thought it was perk. 
probably up till low master <laughs> until someone corrected me. I think I requested this analysis. Might just take a little while. So the idea of, first of all, F4, this is one of the most ambitious tries against this opening. So getting three pawns out here, trying to add more emphasis to the E5 break when that break eventually occurs. And after bishop g7, the normal move, if we click on the book, again, let me move, I'll just move me over here permanently. If we look at the book, it might be a little hard to see, but knight f3 is uh, the top move at this point. Sometimes white plays e5. I am curious if we go ahead here, so I'm just clicking through some of the most popular lines, knight c6, yeah, this is, the same position we got into in the game, and here black usually plays knight h5, but this is the same position we had in the game just without a3 and a5. So okay, that's interesting. Knight takes d5 is the main move, bishop e4, castles, but overwhelmingly knight takes d5, and then c3 is played. Interesting. Not knight e4. I must be just completely misremembering the importance of knight e4. This looks quite similar. I mean, building this structure, trying to block out black's bishop on g7, really common to see that in fighting against a, a bishop. Useful to compare positions like this in openings, by the way. Comparison in general in chess is a great thing. I was doing this a lot in the 100 endgames videos I made. Taking what I know to be true about one endgame and applying it to a new position where there might be one or two tweaks and seeing if my previous knowledge still applies. You should be doing that all the time in chess. So I played this a3 move. Again, funny move. It's directed against this line, though. So on knight f3, black can play c5. This is the second most popular move here. And it leads to some sharp theory. The idea is after takes, black doesn't take back because that would allow queen trade on d8. That's not in black's favor. But black instead plays this move, queen a5. Threatening knight takes e4, because this knight is pinned. And this, again, as you can see, leads to quite a bit of theory. So when you play a3, though, if black plays c5 here, take on c5, queen a5, white has the move b4. I saw this in an old article in New in Chess, maybe, I don't know, 15 years ago now. And I thought it looked interesting, so I've been playing it ever since. So instead, my opponent played a5, which might be a novelty. Just never seen this approach before. Usually black will just play the standard way, castles. And white is trying to get these positions, but having disallowed that c5 active option. So, okay, a5, knight f3, castles, bishop d3. This is all pretty standard. I went e5, and there was a trade. So by analogy, black could try knight h5, but black played knight d5 instead. Let's flick on the engine and see what it says here. Yeah, it wants to play like the other line we were looking at, knight takes d5 and then c3, or castles. Really doesn't like knight e4 that much. Hmm. My thinking with knight e4 is that this knight on d5 might be a target, which proved to be true in the game, but maybe that's optimistic. And black should play f6 here. Okay, yeah, immediately undermine. Looks a little bit funky to do this. This is... Seemingly a wonky pawn structure for black blocking their bishop, but I could see why it makes sense. Take, pawn takes or knight takes. Yeah, and if black gets f5 in, unleashing that bishop, they'll have counterplay. Okay, that's great for me to know. And hopefully you guys too. So, looks like knight takes d5 is the way to go here. Or castles. So knight e4, my opponent played bishop g4 instead, and now I played this solid move. Yeah, and I really don't like h6. Again, if black thought I was trying to use the g5 square, they were wrong about that, but yeah, it just looks like a weak move. I think black should again play f6, for example. Although here, white has a bigger advantage. Yeah, maybe black having moved the bishop is not in black's best interest. I mean, for one thing, so after castles, if black plays f5 here, I think I was mentioning this in the game, knight c5 ideas are now better because with black's bishop on g4, 
I'd be threatening knight takes b7 and also knight e6 with the fork. So not nearly as great a placement for that bishop. Sorry for my computer fan, by the way, every time that I turn on the engine. Spaceship taking off. So, all right, this happened. H6. White has a big advantage at this point, so that was a pretty big strategic error. This is almost plus two for white. It's not like black's going to lose tactically right away, but doesn't do black any favors. I was saying in the game, but if black plays this f6 move now with these pawns all on the same rank, it's just pretty unattractive. I think I was mentioning a line like this, and then maybe knight f2 attacking the bishop, attacking here. Bishop h5 can be met by g4 trapping the bishop. Just not good. Okay, so black played f6, and now knight f2 is the top move. Interesting. Not c4. Knight f2 is plus 3.2. What is the thing about c4? Okay. Allows knight takes d4, so still an edge for white. Yeah. Knight takes d4, bishop takes f3. On bishop takes f3, I was thinking of taking with the g-pawn. The computer, at least its top two moves, are queen takes and rook takes. Interesting. Maybe that's because, so on this, do I just play the queen back to d1 and guard b3? Queen h3, okay. Attacking h6, this knight is still trapped. There is a knight b3 possibility, but maybe that's not working for some reason. What about g takes f3? What's wrong with that? Knight f4. Hmm. Bishop takes. Take here with check. Let's say king h1. Yeah, we got some weaknesses here. A little bit loose. That's what happens when you play a move like c4. Remember, prior to that, my structure was all nice and orderly here. But when I play that, it leads to weaknesses. The pawns aren't protecting each other as well anymore, especially that d4 pawn is, is vulnerable. But black played f5 when black probably should have played that knight takes d4 move. Yeah, and here I went for c takes d5. If I play knight f2 by contrast, I just wasn't as sure about knight takes d4 here. Although the computer is quite sure that this is just good for me. Uh, knight takes g4. I see. And if pawn takes, I can take on d4. And if knight takes f3, I take with a queen, probably. And I'm hitting d5 twice. Okay. That's a detail I did not see. So knight f2 is good. And you could also take and then take d4. Yeah, but that, that looks like a dominating advantage as well. Again, maybe black could win the e5 pawn. But yeah, I'm sure white's doing very well here too. But not a big difference in the eval. I think that's kind of a matter of preference at this point. So c takes d5, f takes e4. Just turn back on the engine one more time. Yeah, this is plus 5.8 according to the engine. Actually says black is better off playing bishop takes f3 here. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I'd be tempted to take with the pawn again. Just on sight. Wants to play this, but yeah, this looks very good for white too. Again, black might be able to win one or two of these pawns, but the piece is better. So after f takes e4, bishop takes e4, I'm solidly defending that center. And let's just bree breeze through here real quick. I don't want to subject you guys to my computer fan for too long. <laughs> okay, here it's saying bishop takes g5. This is already just crushing for me. Not a move I was really looking at, given that I was up the pawn, the stable position. Guess it just thinks that this is an overwhelming attack. But not a risk I was really looking to take. I felt pretty good about all this. A couple of blacks moves surprised me. Like here, I was expecting bishop g4. This is plus 8. 
seems like a very high evaluation, but yeah, it is a position White should win every time. It's just there's a lot of pieces on the board still, and White's only up a pawn. Here it wants to play another fancy idea, check, and then knight e5, trying to exploit the back rank. Went knight d4, won the exchange. Okay, yeah, this all looks pretty okay. Says I can play queen c2 here just fine. What about knight c4? Should I have worried about that move at all? Engine says no. Just play rook f7 and you're still dead winning. <laughs> but nothing wrong with queen b3, I don't think. I took on passant here. Fine. Queen g6 is fine too. And really the only thing at this point was the time. Rook e2. I like that move just to, as I said, destabilize black's pieces. Yeah. A nice way to finish things off with black barely having a move here. Okay, so thanks to my opponent, M. Hamid, for the game. Nice to be back. This is the first game of chess that I've played in, yeah, probably two and a half months, three months. So I'll be back to posting again. Hope you guys are enjoying the holidays. Happy New Year. If I don't talk to you before then, I hope 2020 is good to you. And... I'll probably be streaming on Twitch a little bit as well, twitch.tv slash John Bartholomew, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.